I grew up in the country. We learned a lot about life in the country and how we're part of the world with the insects, the birds, the bees, the squirrels, and how preserving land is important. Some people who grew up in town didn't quite have that experience. In this country, we seem to think you can just use the land any way you want. It goes on forever, and there's plenty of it. No, there's a finite amount of land. So many things that we do, we don't just do for ourselves. You, like you plant trees, not for yourself, you plant them for your grandchildren. And uh, I think the same thing about preserving land. It's for people a long time from now. You know, I was thinking about the early days of the Land Trust. Phil Bredesen was very uh, much influential in the beginning. He had experience with the Land Trust in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which has some great land, but not a whole hell of a lot of easements. He said, we ought to think about this in Tennessee. We knew we were on to something good. We called it the Land Trust for Tennessee. The idea started as just let's a bunch of us get together with this kind of utopian idea of here's this village, let's preserve the village, let's all join together and kind of voluntarily restrict our land in perpetuity and the idea of a vehicle that goes on past our generations. You know, we just thought it was just brilliant. I think especially in the Nashville area, we're seeing such a explosion of development. You just kind of breathe a sigh of relief kind of when you're able to drive past those open spaces, um, even if you never step foot on them. We placed a conservation easement on our family farms down there in Leapers Fork, Tennessee, and uh, that's actually the original Natchez Trace, which some refer to as the oldest road in America. That landscape tells a story. If you listen to the land and the landscape, you, you can imagine the whole story of America's beginnings all the way up to today. And uh, that's really valuable in our community, not only to the folks that live there, but from travelers from all over the world who want to learn the story of America. My name is Chad Weichel. I work for Rock Creek Outfitters. I'm the director of brand development there. I see Rock Creek and the Land Trust for Tennessee working together um, and into the future permanently. You know, there's I don't see this mission that the Land Trust has changing. You know, Rock Creek is in business to sell outdoor goods, and so that's a, that's that's part of our mission. That's what we do. But for us to be able to do that, there have to be outdoor resources. We believe it's in our best interest as a business and as just good human beings. We have to protect them. Whether it's protecting view sheds by making sure that property isn't developed, building trail systems, helping break down barriers to create access into the outdoors around our businesses and beyond. You know, a lot of these areas, the Fiery Gizzard, uh, Denny Cove, Castle Rock, they're not in metropolitan areas, they're, they're in rural areas where there needs to be commerce and people coming and spending time, rock climbing and hiking, backpacking. All those things help drive a positive economy, you know, that's, that's visitation. We're proud to be working with a partner like the Land Trust for Tennessee that has a broader scope to it. We're trying to protect lands across this great state. We believe in that. I'm Todd Jennings from Lynchburg, Tennessee. Our farm is where my brother and I were raised. Uh, we learned to work, we learned responsibility, we learned a lot of things, we learned about life. I first became familiar with the Land Trust for Tennessee, uh, having met a member of the field staff at the Tennessee Cattlemen's Association Convention. On our property there was a, a hill, and from the highest hill there were 34 houses that you could see from that hill today that weren't visible in 1980 and I learned then what a conservation easement does. I learned then how it protects farmland from further development. And I took that information home to my grandmother, my father, and my brother, and we discussed the importance 
what did this mean? And together we decided that a conservation easement was right for us. We learned that uh, we did maintain ownership of the farm. We maintained control of the farm. Nothing agricultural that we would do would be impeded. And everybody felt better about that. So it was a good fit for us. The people that own land love the land. And people that are farmers go to great lengths to take care of it. My name is Kenneth Bracey. This is my wife, Sandra Bracey. Okay, so where you want to start at? Got married in 71? Mm -hmm. We lived right on the Tennessee-Kentucky state line. Our first purchase was, was 187 acres, and it was practically all tillable, and that was exactly what we wanted. We raised corn, wheat, and soybeans. But it was hard. We basically kind of just farmed around the clock. You know, one of us would drive the tractor during the night and one would take over in the morning and he just has this passion for farming that it wasn't going to be quenched until he had a farm and here we are and love it. And so we've got uh, approximately a thousand acres in the land trust which will be continued farmland from from now on and we're very proud that we we did this we're just we're just happy about it. You know, I mean, I'm 67 years old and, and you can't farm forever. Hmm, I didn't see that coming. But, uh, I'm not as old as you. <laughs> I'm not that old. I felt like we was doing the right things. To know that if you've got some land that you've got in the best possible state of cultivation, and you know that, that when you quit, it's going to be farmed. Uh, that's a good feeling. The land trust really can help a landowner find a solution for their property. Um, if someone is wanting to make sure their land is not developed or can be passed on to their children or given to a public entity to become a public property, uh, we are dedicated to finding solutions that help landowners reach their conservation goals. And that will be our future taking care of these conservation easements and these lands that we've promised to take care of and, and protect forever. So thinking into the future is really thinking about what forever looks like. I'm Liz McLaurin, President and CEO of the Land Trust for Tennessee. We're a nonprofit organization that works statewide to protect places that we cannot afford to lose. We protect forests, we protect farms for growing food, wildlife habitat. We also protect places that are historic and are important to the history of the state of Tennessee and our nation. Places like Glen Levin Farm, our farm just a few miles south of downtown Nashville. Protecting land in Tennessee is a significant investment and we need people to continue to support our work so that we can continue the good work of the Land Trust for Tennessee. Certain things you, you don't get through with. You can play a tennis game and it's over. You can play a football game, you won or lost, it's over, or something like that. Something like the Land Trust for Tennessee is not over. You know, it, it's ongoing. I mean, I'm not around forever, I'm gonna be gone. Uh, hopefully up instead of down. <laughs> but we all need to pay attention to how we use the land, how we value farms, how we value parks, how we value the way we live. So it's very exciting to be a part of this organization. It's something that I'm very proud of and Tennessee should be proud of. We've accomplished a lot and we've paved the way for many other land trusts who follow us and say they did it right. <laughs>